And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Ray Shasho Show, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Each week, Ray spotlights in-depth interviews with legendary and -and up-and-coming authors and music artists. Ray also features the movers and the shakers of the music and publishing industries and suggests important methods for getting the most out of your public relations and marketing needs. Please welcome music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Ray Shasho. Welcome to the show where we interview legendary and up-and-coming music artists and authors. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941-877-1552 or email us at publicityworksagency.com. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Heart, Spirit, Firefall, Canned Heat, Stevie Nicks, Dan Fogelberg, White Snake, JoJo Gunn, Chris Holman, Kim Carnes, Joe Walsh, and many more legendary bands and artists have all relied on the brilliant musicianship of Mark Andes to punctuate their songs and elevate their musical visions to chart topping status. Andes has been the rock solid support on bass, guitar, songwriting, and vocals for all the above and others too. Mark Andes has enjoyed a musical career spanning over four decades of groups, generating gold and platinum albums and worldwide impact. He is one of the most respected and loved bass players on the planet. Growing up in Los Angeles, Mark was a founding member of such cutting-edge bands as Can Heat and Spirit while still a teenager. Spirit is still considered by many in the U.S. and abroad to be the first band to successfully fuse jazz and rock with protest folk-like lyrics, and is known as a progressive rock innovator. Their four albums, Spirit, The Family That Plays Together, Clear, and The Twelve Dreams of Dr. Sardonicus, released from 1967 through 70, all are propelled by the visionary rhythm section of Mark Andes and Ed Cassidy and include red uh, radio staples, such as Got a Line on You and Nature's Way. Spirit toured with the 1960s bands including Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, uh, the Rolling Stones, Jefferson Airplane, the Birds, Steppenwolf, Janis Joplin, and so many others. Bark and Spirit's lead vocalist Jay Ferguson went on to form the hard rock and JoJo Gunn, which also included Mark's brother Matt Andy, and quickly scored a top 30 hit with the infectious Run, Run, Run. Mark then moved on to the mountains above Boulder, Colorado and for a short time was in two bands there, Firefall and Navarro, soon to be Carol's, Carol King's backup band. During a brief tour with the Chris Hillman band uh, that included Rick Roberts and Jock Bartley, we had Rick Roberts on the show, Chris became ill and Firefall finished the three-day stint in New York City where Atlantic Records heard the band. Within the month, they signed the band to a long-term recording contract, and it was off to the races. In Firefall, Mark was paired with drummer Michael Clark from the Birds and Flying Burrito Brothers, and a very solid and distinctive rhythm section was formed. Mark's progressive and uh, melodic bass style enhanced Michael's straight-ahead drumming, playing with guitarist Jock Bartley, who we'll we'll have on the show here pretty soon, and a multi-instrumentalist David Muse. Uh, Firefall's sound became much more than the country rock style they were often cast as. The Colorado-based group enjoyed huge success right from the start in 1976, receiving nationwide saturation, radio airplay, and touring with the top bands of the day. Fleetwood Mac Rumors Tour, the band, on their final tour before making the last waltz and breaking up. Leonard Skinner, the Doobie Brothers, with Michael McDonald, Loggins and Messina, Hart, Cheap Trick, the Allman Brothers, Marshall, Tucker, America, Kenny Loggins, and many others. Mark left Firefall in 1979. In 1982, Hart and Nancy Wilson recruited Mark, where he co-wrote their return to radio hit, How Can I Refuse? In 1983, infusing creative bass, rhythm, and vocals. Mark Andy's musical talent, as well as his good looks, made the group one of the original MTV darlings. Hart's vibrant comeback, comeback to industry prominence was on. After the band moved to Capitol Records in 1985, they made the album simply called Heart. That album reached number one, sold five million copies, and launched four top ten hit songs. What about you? Never. These Dreams. 
Nothing at all. A fifth single, If Looks Could Kill, also charted, making five hit singles from the same album for the first time. Mark Andy's 10-year stint with Hart from 1982 through 92, 82 through 92, was dotted with multi-platinum albums, number one chart-topping hit singles, awarding award-winning videos, and non-stop arena headlining tours worldwide. Mark Andy's rejoined Firefall in January of 2014 and looks forward to helping Firefall play relevant, compelling shows and recording new records. On January 9, 2015, in Denver, Colorado, Firefall and Mark Andes were inducted into the Colorado Music Hall of Fame along with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Poco, and Stephen Stills and Manassas. Please welcome musician, singer, songwriter, and current bassist for the legendary Firefall, Mark Andes, to the Ray Shasho Show. Hello, Mark. Hey, Ray. What an intro. I'm, I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> it's hard to get all that in, you know. You've done so much, man. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have a time constraint. Oh, my goodness. How many bands are you going to play with? <laughs> uh, I know, I know. It's hard for me to keep a job, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love Firefall. I love Firefall. I've actually saw you twice in concert. I saw you with Spirit, and uh, I think it was 76 somewhere right around there in a small club in Baltimore uh, called the Hollywood Palace. And then oh. I saw you with uh, on the tour with Hart. You guys opened right. up for Hart. And I also saw you another time with Firefall. So, yeah, I'm really familiar with, uh, with, with, with the band. <laughs> wow, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, Ray. That was very very nice intro and very, very detailed. You got right into the, the weeds with it. It was great. Well, you have to. You have to educate everybody. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of young young people that need to know, you know. So. Well, that's that's a true thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You got you guys just finished playing Florida not too long ago. Correct. Yeah, we we spent. Oh man, I I guess it was March. We were there a lot. Right. We played uh, Mount Dora and you know some places that I'd never really been before. So it was a nice, extensive little Florida holiday. <laughs> You guys always play Ruth Eckert uh, just about every year in Clearwater. Correct, we, yeah. And we thank you for that, because sometimes bands miss us down here in the South. Uh, yeah, you play Key West. Well, what is playing Key West like? It was uh, it was wonderful. I mean, it's it's a journey to get there, and, you know, we, uh, we just had to do our planning and leave plenty early and uh, plan for all of the potential delays that can happen on that particular route. But getting there, it was beautiful. It was on St. Patrick's Day, as a, mm. as a matter of fact. And I thought it was going to be crazy, crazy. But it was actually really mellow, and we played uh, this beautiful old uh, theater. I forget that I'm blanking the name of it at the moment, but it's, it's an old theater that's been around for a long time as a theater, and uh, just a great bunch of people that run it, very professional, the sound and the whole experience was really really fun i loved it yeah i've I've lived in florida now about i don't know 17 years and i've still never been to key west <laughs> well you it's, it's not on the way to any place else it's <laughs> that's not, for sure it's not <laughs> <laughs> just one long bridge that takes you there and that's it yeah well you guys firefall has some uh more upcoming dates you just finished a bunch of dates uh i, I guess you go back on the road again on is it june 9th with in Nor norfolk is that the yes, we, we play, uh, apparently there's some festival in Norfolk that's happening. And yeah, we've got a little break uh, right. from now until then, so that's good. Well, well you, you got, Dave, I want to plug you guys as much as I can. You'll be in Newark, Ohio on June 15th right. at the Midland Theater. You'll be in Napa, uh, the wine country there, and it, for two shows. Yeah, uh, on the yeah we do uh, two, two sh uh, shows per night at, for two nights. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's, that's one of my favorite uh, areas in California to visit, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. You'll be in Costa Mesa uh, on July 15th, still in California. Then you'll be closer to home in Texas, right, in Arlington? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, uh, that's it's, like the beginning of uh, next year, I believe. Of 2019, that right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Arlington. then we play this really fun little venue closer to where I live uh, in Magnolia, Texas, at right. the do, do It's this uh, old barn that was taken apart in Michigan and reassembled 
uh, in the woodlands here in, in, in the Houston area. Mm-hmm. And then we, the One World Theater in Austin is the, is the, so it's a little trio of Texas shows, our, our world tour of Texas. Austin's a cool place for music. That, that's oh, like, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, I've lived, I lived there uh, for almost 10 years, I, and I've mm-hmm. been out here. My, I, I married a gal that has a little horse ranch out here in, in Magnolia, mm-hmm. so I can't believe I've been in Texas 20 years. I would never have thunk that, but I did want to get to Austin. I was living in uh, Taos, New Mexico, and I was mm-hmm. working with Dan uh, Fogelberg, when he, right. uh, went, uh, and he was uh, just up the road in Pagosa Springs, so that worked out perfectly. And then uh, my thing with Dan ended, and I kind of migrated but with everybody else to Austin, and it, it was a great experience. I played with some really talented. My favorite was uh, playing with Ian McLagan. Wow. The guy with the, with the, from the uh, faces and the small faces yeah. and all that, so... Yeah, it's been a, it's been quite a journey. Many many notes, <laughs> and you're still standing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you still look as young as ever, man. You look great. You've been ta- obviously been taking care of yourself all these years. You well, know? no, I'm, but uh, <laughs> thanks for saying. But for saying that, you know, I've lived a you know just a, a robust life. I just mm-hmm. am grateful for the genes. But it's so funny that I. Um, I turned 70 in February, and it's it's hilarious because up until uh, then I had no problem. I mean, I just didn't no aches and pains or anything. And all right. of a sudden, within a couple of months of my 70th birthday, I'm going, "Oh God, what what's going on with my head?" And the, guy, the, the doctor <laughs> said, "Oh, arthritis." And so oh, I'm my going, now I'm feeling my age. <laughs> I know it, when you get to the knee replacements or hip re- replacements, hip, then you yeah. know you're in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of rock stars have gotten hip replacements already. I know Niels Lofgren uh, has, and uh, I think um, Paul Stanley from Kiss has got a, um, a hip replacement. So, and and I think also uh, Steven Tyler, you know, from jumping around all the, all the, on the stage yeah, and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a full contact way to make <laughs> a living for sure. <laughs> well, uh, we we had a mutual friend. And uh, I, I just had uh, Joe Vitale and Ken Passarelli on the show recently, and, and they're also friends of uh, uh, Joe Lala, who was in yeah. Tampa. And yeah. Joe was such a cool guy. And, and you know, he, he went on and on about that uh, Firefall reunion back in 2008 at the uh, Boulder Theater. Yep. How, how cool that was and how much fun he had on that. I think that was, like, you know, something that really uh, – uh, made him happy over the last, you know, years before before he passed away and everything. Yeah. Oh, it's so sad to lose him. What an innovator. And I love Kenny and, and uh, Joe Vitale, two of my f- favorite guys and, and just yeah. wonderful musicians. So, yeah, but losing Joe, but he was such an innovator. I mean, playing congas and, and timbales and stuff like that with rock bands and making it just sing, sound like it was meant to be there from the get-go. And we go back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe Lala and I go back to the Spirit Blues Image days. Yeah, yeah. he talked about you. You and oh. Jock and, and all the guys, you know? Y- yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, we used to play The Experience down there. Remember that club, huh. The Experience? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Uh, during the um, late 80s and 90s, another guy from Firefall you don't hear about anymore is Larry Burnett, who actually, I, I'm originally from the Washington, D.C. area, and he he was a DJ up there for a while on, on the classic rock radio station. Yep, uh, yep, he yeah. sure was. And he's there yeah. still and, and doing uh, dates. I think he's teamed up with a, 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 another guy, and they do mm-hmm. duo shows there. But he, his health won't let him uh, tour uh, like the, in, the, in the way that we do it, which is a lot right. of travel and stuff. So he sticks close to home, but he's he's so good. And, and his songs were, I don't know, the, just the, the whole way that uh, Rick's material uh, kind of was paired with Larry's kind of cynical, kind of edgier sound really rounded out uh, the, the Firefall sound, in my opinion. Firefall is such a great band, and and you were there with all the the big hits, 
of course. Uh, you Are the Woman, which peaked at number nine on Billboard. Uh, Just Remember I Love You, number 11. My favorite of all time is Strange Way, and I think a lot of people, you know, I love that song. Cinderella, oh, of course, man. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, you were and Joe Lala is the star of that track. The whole the idea that, that Tom Dowd had of, well, we had this big, you know, jam session, and we just couldn't figure out how to kind of get there. If we, at that tempo that the song was played in originally, didn't quite have the... And, and, and uh, Tom says, hey, just speed the sucker up. And and, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, and, and the, the, the you can hear Joe, he's, he's doing these crazy timbali fills and you hear him going hey, he's out there singing with it it's just oh well thank you i'm glad you like that song i do too it's one of my favorites as well cinderella got a little bit of uh uh publicity didn't it it sure did it's <laughs> well people yeah they it yes it's it did <laughs> people you know the the narrative is a little uh it's the story and, and it's about the the the, the 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 baby and the mm-hmm. and the whole uh, story about the, the relationship and people assume I, I don't they, there was a there was a t- uh, a tent, tense shift in there that at the last verse you, you should have left that day <laughs> which means that 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 actually uh, she stayed and and so all that you know uh, uh, reflective stuff at the end of the right. lyric was almost kind of but anyway, they they stayed together is the point of, of of my realization. And Larry wrote that song. I found out just recently when we played up in the D.C. area, and he came in mm-hmm. and sat in with us. And he told the story of the song. He wrote it when he was sixteen. Really? Wow. Yeah. Huh. That's like Greg Lake writing uh, "Lucky Man" when he was about that. Yeah. You know, I think even younger when he wrote that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Y- you know what's uh, you guys are incorporating. I noticed a lot of spirit, a few spirit songs now into your set, uh, which is neat. You know, I think why not? You know. Well, you know, when Jock asked me to come back and everything, um, mm-hmm. my friend Curly Smith, who was in JoJo Gun with us and is now uh, in Boston, right, um, was big on these classic rock uh, bands. So he was mm-hmm. he was wanting me to get into one of his uh, classic rock outfits where all these guys that had done right. stuff get together. And there's the rock vault. Howard Least does that mm-hmm. in Las Vegas with my good friend Jason Boylston. But uh, so I had that on my mind, and I thought, well, you know, I mean, people remember the Firefall songs, but a lot of people don't remember the name of the group, really. But, but I mm-hmm. thought if we kind of went out of our way to sort of introduce people to the family tree, so to speak, sure. musically, with that it would, you know, elevate the the the, the brand a, a little bit. And um, so he, Jock, to his credit, took that, you know, uh, suggestion to heart, and we started to play, uh, you know, like you're saying, we started to play God Line and Nature's Way. Mm-hmm. And uh, it it's so gratifying to play those songs because that now we're talking about firefall touring and it's the 70s experience but then here i go the old hippie in the band playing the 60s stuff and people respond like crazy it's so touching it's wonderful everyone loves nature's way i mean that yeah you know it's such a great tune what 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 is the uh the, the true meaning of nature's way i mean is it you know the uh you know, about the earth and, and that kind of thing, or is there another meaning to that? Well, you know, Randy, he might have had a lot of other um, meanings in there. And I, I, right. I, I heard that he once was thinking that part of the the message in the song was a, somehow, and I never really connected the dots to figure out exactly how it played out, but he thought that there was this kind of competitive thing with the bands in LA and the, and the Bay Area bands and somehow I don't know what he was thinking but I always took it as you know a, a song about the environment you know right we just as this just as fresh garbage kind of was I mean, right if right you think right. about that it was so we were uh, kind of uh, thinking about those issues back then and so uh, I, that's my my take and um 
Yeah, great song. I love performing it. You know, it's it's uh, it's wonderful. The song's timeless. I mean, you yeah, can't... basic. In fact, here's a scoop for you. Mm-hmm. Firefall has recorded that song. We're in, we're in the process of putting some new material together right. to be able to sell at shows and stuff. And so, oh, awesome. Recently, we cut a track to fire to the uh, the Nature's Way song, and it came out nice, and it came out it was so. Uh, it kind of was on hold for, I guess it was last summer we cut it in Colorado. Huh. And uh, I came off, uh, I came back from a trip to Nashville. Fire, we were doing some more recording, and I got home. Uh, and Timothy uh, Schmidt was uh, at the do si mm-hmm. where Firefall plays, performing uh, his, his, uh, with his uh as a solo band guy so he had his beautiful band assembled and i went to the show and i was sitting backstage and the bass player who was with the beach boys for a long time and was their musical director started playing nature's way spontaneously just kind of started playing it, and then everybody kind of sang in and we harmonized with it. it was very touching and it occurred to me god i wonder if uh if timothy would want to come in and maybe help me sing it mm-hmm. so after the show i asked timothy if he would sing it with me and he said yes and <laughs> i i uh, uh, our mutual friend and uh timothy's musical director hank linderman said just be persistent but yeah he, I, you, I think it'd be great i think he'd like to do it well i asked and i got the answer i was looking for so he recorded his vocals and the guitar player in timothy's band was John McPhee, who's a, who's the, one of the Doobie Brothers? Oh, Doobie Brothers, yeah. I met I met John, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I I uh, asked John if he would want to do some stuff. So he put on these yeah. this pedal steel track and mandolin mm-hmm. and I mean it's wow it, it's coming out really great. We have a lot of mixing to do to get everybody in there, but uh, there's flute. Uh, David uh, wrote this beautiful flute part, so it it's special. It's gonna and Man, it, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, good because uh, I'm excited about it. You can probably tell because it's uh, it's my way of honoring Randy because there yeah. was never really a proper tribute right. to Randy and the whole uh, lawsuit mm-hmm. thing with Led Zeppelin uh, is still yep. in. in uh, it's still, uh, it's still in litig- being on, litigated. Yeah. There, it's on appeal. So there was yeah. never really any. F- closure to that whole thing so this is an opportunity and i think uh well i know the firefall guys and timothy and john probably felt it was really nice to be able to give randy a little love you know mm-hmm. oh he was he was such a great player randy oh, it, it's so sad i mean the, the way he died was so heroic you know it's saving his son i mean oh my god yeah yeah but you know? Uh, you know i used to i got angry with randy because yeah. Why would you take your young son swimming, in, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, off Molokai uh, right. with some rough surf? I mean, rough surf. So huh? I had my issues with Randy just taking Quinn out there in the first place. But yeah, really? once he once he realized, well, yeah, I mean, I thought, huh. God, what are you doing? But yeah. that said, you know, when Quinn got in trouble, Randy was there for sure. Yeah. And the little guy just wait, and they were on a deserted beach. The Quinn mm. waited for his daddy till the sun went down, and somehow, you know, somebody got worried and found him. But it's you know, it's, am- it's amazing tragic. how he saved he saved his son, but he couldn't save himself. You know, correct? Yep. Yeah. Well, it, huh. you know, I, I grew up <clears throat> in California and right. surfed and body surfed <clears throat> my whole life, and I'll tell you, when you're struggling against. Uh, currents and uh, big waves and stuff. Mm-hmm. You're um, you get exhausted really quickly, and once the tank goes, you, you run out of energy. Um, you know, so the last bit of energy probably to get push Quinn into a wave that would carry him to shore. Right. Just uh, just was the last bit of energy that he had, unfortunately. Yeah. So sad. Really yeah. Really is. Yeah. Do you still talk with Jay, Jay Ferguson? We do. You know, we we kind of don't have much in common anymore, but uh, he's a very successful uh, music uh, 
he's, he's work, been working with the NCIS LA mm-hmm. uh, show for a long time, and of course he wrote the uh, the uh, the theme to the Office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that so he's very successful. It's going well. But uh, you know we don't we don't uh, pal around like we used to. <laughs> yeah, you guys you you were friends in high school, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, you lose touch with a guy. A lot of guys too. I mean. From high school, I I don't oh, know yeah. anybody anymore from high school. <laughs> it's a shame. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, I stay in touch with a few guys, but yeah. you know, it's yeah. You're right. It's more difficult to, as we get older, I guess. Yeah. You know, I never knew, and a lot of people probably did not know about Ed Cassidy, Mr. Skin, uh, about how old he was in the band, and and he was uh, uh, Randy's stepfather, right? Correct. Yeah, he yeah. was in his 40s when we were in our teens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he passed away. He was 89 years old. Uh, yeah. I didn't know how old he was until I interviewed Merrill uh, Fankhauser. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And Ed was in, in that band. You know, He was playing drums for Merrill, and right. uh, that's how I found out how old he was. Isn't that but funny? Yeah, he yeah, was in World true. War II, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool, though. Oh, it know? was... It was really cool. I mean, it just made the whole family that plays together resonate, you know. That, that It was really unique, and Spirit will always have a special place in my heart because it was just so uh, unique, and we had a sense of humor. The mm-hmm. songs were, you know, we would make fun, poke fun at ourselves. And, right. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, it was one of those, I don't know, important things in my life that I still draw upon. And you, know, you can tell right now I'm excited about Firefall recording that song now. So it's <clears throat> amazing how uh, contemporary that whole thought and, and that, that a relationship is. Oh, it was a great band and probably you know ahead of its time. Do you think the group should have gotten more recognition than, than it did? More PR, you think? <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think you nailed it. I think it was a PR blunder. Uh, Lou said, "Well, I don't know what we're going to release as a single off the first record." He said, "Well, let's just give it to FM radio and whatever um, gets gets going on the radio, then that'll be right. the first single." But so and then uh, so then Mechanical World winds up as the single in in, in Florida, actually. In in my in the Miami area, mm-hmm. but Lou never connected the dots. So we, we we said, okay, that'll be the first single. But then, it, we had regional spotty uh, success, but no one ever took the time to really uh, get us out there and promote the thing on a national basis. So we wound up just having kind of regional success throughout the whole career. Actually, it, it's amazing, you know. Yeah. It, it, how that and, and Lou Adler? I mean, you had him on your side, and yeah. you couldn't run with it, you know. Yeah, it's you know the music business. I don't know. Yeah. It's pretty brutal, yeah. and not everybody uh, does. I don't know business the way you would hope that they would, and right. I think we just got caught in kind of a bad uh, relationship, you know, <clears throat> with with Lou and and all that. But it it was okay, you know. We, but I, I I was okay because I moved on and uh, mm-hmm. but even you know but Randy couldn't stop doing Spirit. I think he had a uh, a sense of responsibility to Cass mm-hmm. and 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 many times I would talk to Randy. We we would write songs together. I said, Randy, right. you should give Spirit a rest. Get get become successful as a solo guy, yeah. and I'll help you do it. You know, right. I wasn't hard at that time. Right. And I'm saying, man, you know, you're the best. God, you, let's, let's get you going. Let spirit rest and mm-hmm. then come back and people will have missed spirit by that time. And it, maybe you'll have a shot of really get, getting it going again. <clears throat> and he couldn't. He just couldn't. And I don't know why I, he felt, uh, I don't know whether he felt that Cash <clears throat> needed to be involved in every. Uh, everything musical that he did yeah. or what, but, uh, yeah, it was unfortunate. And, and the poor guy had so much pressure as a, as a young guy. Right. His, I mean, he was mainly the breadwinner and, 
um, they've just put a lot of pressure on him, and it was, yeah, I, I felt bad for Randy. I was able to move on and do other stuff. Randy yeah. kind of was stuck, you know. Yeah, you went on to uh, form Jojo Gunn, which was, I mean, I remember that time. You know, when Run, Run, Run came out on on the radio, man, I fell in love with that song. Yeah, was it was so rocking. cool. But the funny thing is that I felt vulnerable in spirit. Randy kind of got weird when we were recording uh, 12 Dreams, and right. he fell off a horse, had a head injury, and, of course, mm. everybody was partying like crazy back then, and he right. continued to party through his recovery, and he became a little irrational, and uh, we had a, a tour of Japan booked, mm-hmm. and I, everybody mm-hmm. was leaving the next day for... Japan to tour, and it was a big deal for a spirit mm-hmm. to have that opportunity. And I get a call late that night, the, the night before we were to take off, and Randy just says, "No, I don't want to. I don't want to do it. No, you know, discussion or anything. I'm just not not doing it." And I thought, "Oh man, mm. I regret not having the skills to confront and kind of work through the the deal." But what it did was set off a bunch of uh, red lights and flares. I went, "Oh, oh I can't." <clears throat> stay in a situation where I have such little control. So I <laughs> Jay and I leave, which was sad, and uh, and we put JoJo Gun together, and then I, I, we put the band in, they're living in my at my house. Curly Smith is in my at mm-hmm. my place, rehearsing at my place for a year. We put this thing together, and I was fired from my own band. You're kidding me. The first tour. The first tour, before I even got home, we had uh, uh, this kind of a wacky tour manager guy, Danny Tucker, and uh-huh. somehow they started all talking about me and my then-girlfriend, uh, and it got, I, I was fired from my own band. And that's when I said, forget about this, I'm out of here, you know, and I remember uh, my landlady said, oh, you should buy this house, and you know, don't leave, and I said, no, I'm out of here, and I took my then girlfriend and her daughter to Colorado, and I only knew one family there in, in Colorado, but found uh, Jeff Reeves, and he was a wonderful guy, and he put uh, the three of us up, and I got going, and we put the Navarro thing together, mm-hmm. Richard Ruster right. and Mark Hallman were a, a duo from Kalamazoo, uh, going by the name of uh, Navarro, and I was the third guy at it, and then we got Robert McEntee involved, and it was a wonderful band, and um, I kind of ran my cor- its course with, with that band. I, I kind of came out the other side and started working with Chris. But yeah, it was a—it was a—it was this event, a sad kind of mm-hmm. disturbing little thing, just the kick I needed to get out of the LA area and start up my right. Colorado phase. There's something about Boulder and and, and musicians, man. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the the funny thing is that I think I'm leaving the LA scene. I'm saying, oh, this this is bullshit. No, I can't. You know, I'm out of here. And then I didn't realize at the time that LA and Topanga all moved to Boulder too. I mean, there was Neil and all the people that we were hanging with in, in Topanga Canyon were all up in, in, in Boulder at that time. It, it was pretty silly, really. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting connections now with Colorado. My uh, uh, my niece lives out there with his her uh, husband, who's a who's a cop out there. Um, okay. And then my daughter's husband, her family goes out there skiing every year. And they're, everyone's kind of talking about Colorado so much. I may end up in Colorado because oh, you know, they got all the grand, all the kids, all the grandkids, and everything. Well, Who knows? heck yeah, man! It's yeah. wonderful. It's yeah, wonderful. Beautiful there. out there. It really is. It sure I've been is. to Denver, but that, that's about it. Well, do some exploring. Now that yeah. You've got, you know your contacts there. That's wonderful. A lot of bears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to I want to tell the uh, listening audience your dad, Keith Andes, right. uh, who also served in World War II in the Air Force, uh, was a famous actor. And did did he bring uh, shop home at all at the, at the time, or did he have any famous people come out to the house when you were a kid? Or yeah, yeah, we had yeah. Uh, they threw parties and mm-hmm. people like Julie London would 
they'd be all singing songs and Jack wow. Webb and oh uh, gosh. Um, so the short answer is yes, and and, and he took us to to work with him. Oh, wow. So we got to watch him act and and sound stages and. Uh, it was it was really wonderful the, that movie uh, Blackbeard the Pirate with uh, mm-hmm. Linda Darnell and uh, the uh, oh, I'm blanking his name the the pirate guy that uh, coined the whole R thing as uh, right pirate. right I know who you're talking about yeah, yeah I, I'll think of his name but but we got to hang with all of that I got to see Rod Steiger do his big monologue, and uh, huh. I think it was Three Came Back. It was about an airplane that crashed in the Amazon, and there were headhunters around, and blah, blah, blah. they had to fire up the, this DC-3 on the set in the sound studio. It was just mm-hmm. crazy. It was wild. It was really wonderful. And Broadway. We got to... My dad, we, you know, he was a, he started a, uh, in the theater, mm-hmm. and I got to see... Well, uh, Lucille Ball was a dear friend, and uh, they... Keith and Lucille uh, worked together on Wildcat, so it was mm-hmm. it was quite an. Ex- I'm sure it it shaped me and helped me be comfortable uh, in the creative, lively arts. You know, I I I have always felt comfortable. You know, gender people. I mean, uh, gay people. Ne- they never bug me. You know, I, mm-hmm. I just was uh, never. You know what I'm saying? It was like a, a kind of a liberating way to grow up. And uh, I'm grateful for it. I mean, he wasn't exactly supportive of a Matt and I going into music, <clears throat> but oh well. <laughs> did, did he want you to become an actor? <laughs> huh? Did, did he want you to become an actor? Oh no, no, no! no? Very okay. uh, discouraging on all that. Right. He said, no, no, yeah. no, you want to be. Dude. But uh, but anyway, but yeah, I, I, I pursued. Actually, I did want to become a large animal vet because we grew up on a little ranch and. Southern California, and right. I loved the horses. Worked uh, in high school, junior high and high mm-hmm. school, for this veterinarian out there, Doc Baker. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh well, that'll be my fallback. And I went to Pierce Junior College and took some animal husbandry co- courses and some science mm-hmm. and math classes, and got my ass kicked. Really? Just scholastically, I just did not have it. And uh, huh. fortunately, music was ascending, and I was actually making some pretty decent money. For being a kid, I, w- I graduated from high school, 17 years old in 1965. So I was just, you know, it was just getting going, and my band was starting to get some momentum. So it was, mm-hmm. it worked out perfect. <laughs> well, your, your dad acted with Marilyn Monroe in Clash by Night. Yeah. Um, he was in This Man Dawson, which was, I think, he was a cop or something, right, on a TV show. Yeah, that was his uh, TV yeah. series, actually. That was pretty cool. Uh, he, he he did a lot of TV. Huh? He did he did a lot of TV? The Andy Griffith Show. Uh, he was in The Rifleman, an episode I remember, because I, I, I was a big Rifleman fan. Oh yeah, Chuck Connors. Yeah, oh, that was man. a great show. He, he's awesome. It's still on, I think, on uh, MeTV. Oh, wow, that's great. He <laughs> yeah. did a Half Gun Will Travel and Star Trek. Yeah, he he he, he had a reoccurring role as. The uh, in I Spy, Robert Culp uh-huh. and Bill Cosby, he was their boss, and he but mainly of like a voiceover guy. But then he, they had him uh, many times would be on set with those guys, so he had that going on too. Well, fellow Trekkies, Mark's dad was a Cuda in the episode <laughs> episode five, season two, entitled "The Apple." Oh, you are so good, man! <laughs> wow, <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> Way to go, Ray. I'm a Trekkie. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> he was really cool that? in that episode. <laughs> yeah, how about the, the? it looked like the uh, pompadour that, uh, yeah. that, that, uh, that, that soul singer guy, that white soul singer had the white pompadour. Space-aged uh, hippies, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what, what, is it like, what is it like today when you, you see your dad in these old shows? Well, I you know I don't see him often, but it's it was always fun to see mm-hmm. him work, you know. And the uh, actually the most interesting and fun uh, phase of that whole thing ha- happened when he was he did the national uh, road companies of both 
Man of La Mancha and um, uh, the uh, King Arthur one. What was that? Uh, so he did Man of La Mancha and uh, oh, that famous show where it's, it's about King Arthur. I don't know. I'm blanking on that too. It's, hey, I'm turning seventy. What can I say? <laughs> but but the, he was doing that at the same time as Spirit was touring, right. and we would catch we would be in the same city from time to time, and mm-hmm. we would go to his show, and then he and some of his pals would come to see our shows, and that was a blast because you know watching a, a theatrical uh, presentation, I mean done you know professional all the way. I mean the national touring company of these shows was uh, spectacular. And we it would it was just wonderful to have that kind of connection, you know. You went on to uh play in Heart, uh, which was I mean, I, I can't say enough about everything you've done in your life, man. It's so cool. Oh, you re- you remind me a little bit of uh Ansley Dunbar, you know, 'cause he did he did a lot of that stuff playing drums. I mean he yeah, you saw him yeah. everywhere. You yeah, know, in yeah. a lot of bands as well. Yeah. Uh but but you know the the hard album, uh, which I didn't know, Mickey Thomas was on that, and so was Grace Slick. Yeah, yeah, it was it was great. It was wonderful, and you know it was uh, it was the I guess the only real certifiable rock star mm-hmm. decade I had. You know, <clears throat> but we sure did good work. We were a great band, and uh, it's um, I'm proud of the work we did. I mean it. The, the girls like to diss the whole '80s era. It's just uh, it, inconsequential, but uh, because they they I don't know they they like to portray themselves as the victims of you know people kind of manipulating them into scrunching into little uh, outfits that made them sexy. But that was all their idea, to be honest. And uh, so, uh, but I never had a problem dressing up and playing rock and roll. I thought, mm-hmm. oh well, this is fun. I can do this. Sure. And I thought we. We did that and did it well, um, and the the songs, you know, they're not I, every song was a gem, but I'll, I can tell you that uh, many many songs were written for every record, and um, we were well rehearsed and uh, as a band, and uh, it was a I worked with with Denny and Howard was was a special special deal. I really enjoyed that band. You were on a lot of great albums: Passion Works, Heart, Bad Animals, Brigade, Rock the House Live. You played twelve string, right, on that album? Yeah, I, th- I think I did. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm uh, I keep in touch with Roger Fisher a lot. Oh, he's a great guy. He's a good guy. <clears throat> that was the interesting thing was getting yeah. asked to join Heart, and. Firefall opened up for Hart in the late 70s. So we went I saw to Japan that. with Hart. I saw Hart that in Hollywood, Hollywood, Florida. Yeah. Yeah, we played Hollywood and we went to Japan and opened yep. opened up for the Beach Boys and Hart. Mm-hmm. So I I knew those guys and really loved those guys. And we hung out mm-hmm. and had a good time. So, yeah, that's, I'm glad that those guys uh, got inducted into the Hall of Fame, although Ann and Nancy didn't want Denny and me to get it. Get, Inducted, so we did not, but I, but we deserved to have been because that was the whole resurgence of their career that enabled them to right. uh, d- develop a whole new audience that they are, are uh, benefiting from even today. You know, I've had Michael DeRozier, uh, Steve Fawson on the show, and they're doing that uh, uh, heart by heart deal now. Right. Uh, I've talked to Mike Fisher, Magic Man. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. I was a big, big, big Hart fan. I love, uh, I love yeah, it was a great Fisher. band. It's a shame, uh, though, with Ann and Nancy, what's going on. I, I don't know if they're resolving that or what's going to happen because they're. I don't know. <clears throat> I, I yeah. don't. I've heard about <clears throat> some of the dramatics, but they're just you know they've got issues. Who doesn't? But you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you about the lawsuit. What, 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 where are you guys on that lawsuit now with with, uh, with Spirit and Led Zeppelin? It's on appeal, and uh, okay. Francis, the lawyer for Randy's estate, is. Uh, I, I'm not sure. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure. <clears throat> you know, right. the. Um, I was in favor of 
doing this just because I thought uh, it was probably the last opportunity for Randy to get acknowledged. Right. And, uh, of course, the dis- initial decision uh, went against us because the, the jury never heard Spirit's performance of uh, Taurus, which is what you need to hear. They had this deposit copy uh sort of this weird recording that I don't even know who made this recording, but mm-hmm. there's just this a single note piano uh, line, and then there's this beginning of John Locke's harpsichord solo that was never initially to be part of the song Taurus, and I, we were at a big disadvantage when that <clears throat> ruling went against us. So we might have gotten out lawyered, but, you know, <clears throat> I, I really didn't have any... Um, stake in it. It was just trying to get Randy right. some acknowledgement and some credit. I just wanted his legacy to show something, you know, really, really powerful and it showed a real, kind of give people an idea of the contribution mm-hmm. Randy really made to music. And, uh, you know, it may happen, it may not, but at least, you know, we gave it a shot, you know. That's my yeah, it's strange. It's strange that only the sheet music was allowed, which doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't. <laughs> it, it, sheet music. It, yeah, exactly. It, and yeah. and the, the critical thing that I think we could have uh, could have made the difference is that it, back in those days, the perf- the first performance was the actual copyright. So the mm-hmm. uh, the, the us recording Taurus on the f- first record. That's the that's the copyright. So this deposit thing that they wound up using in court really didn't need to have anything to do with the with the uh, suit. Right. But that's what we we kind of had both hands tied behind us with that ruling. Actually, yeah, I'm su- I'm surprised Zeppelin didn't get sued uh, for a lot of other songs, especially "Whole Lot of Love," which you know the small well, faces they did. did. They, oh, they, 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 they did get sued for that. Yeah, babe, I'm gonna leave you and all. So yeah, they yeah. they've settled many many uh, plagiarism suits. Yeah, Which you is, need love in versus whole lot of love. I mean, come on, that's you know. The, exactly. The, yeah. the point is, you know, Led, Led Zeppelin are so talented, and and mm-hmm. they put these songs together. They they were derivative in some ways, but embrace it and just give pass the credit right. on, and then right. take your share and make your zillions of dollars, your mega millions, and, you know, we're, we're good. But the, I think they just kind of got caught up in the the music, grab it and steal it if you can, and if you get caught, then, you yeah. know, drag, make them drag it through court, you know, and, and it, just, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of weird. But, but they were nice guys when we played with them. They were all happy. Yeah. They, they liked to... Uh, they liked uh, fresh garbage too. I, that was interesting <laughs> hearing that. Your, your latest album, I, that was Real World Magic. Oh your, yeah, um, yeah, that's just my little. Yeah. That was just a bunch of musical scraps that never. I liked it. it it's a, yeah. It was a very interesting instrumental piece. Uh, how many instruments did you play on that album? Well, everything but the drums. Really. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It, it was just me kind of cleaning. You're an up excellent when I first... acoustic player. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, John Fahey, bless his mm-hmm. heart, uh, taught my brother how to finger pick like that, and we actually did with Matt and Jay uh, and myself uh, played on the Yellow Princess record. Right. On on John's uh, Fahey's record, and we had all these kind of great Fahey songs all worked up and. We got up to San Francisco when the night before, and that was the very night that uh, Bobby Kennedy was assassinated. Mm-hmm. And all we could muster up was this dirge thing that John just couldn't stop playing. So for like the, the album is mainly I think two songs with this long extended dirge type song. And um, but uh, Matt and John became dear friends and. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I actually learned how to finger pick from John Fahey. Really? Yep. Uh, yeah, Pre Leo Kotke, you know. Leo Kotke, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, before Leo. Yeah. He was awesome. Oh, he's a badass, huh? Yeah. It's just he's amazing. And the the guitar 
uh, that uh, was it Richard Emmanuel, this mm-hmm. Australian guy now. They're just some of these guys are just coming up with amazing techniques. Yeah. It's really Michael H- uh, Hedges. Michael Hedges was one of my Michael favorite Hedges. guys too. Yeah. Well, you did a, you did a song for Ted Green on that. I album. did. I took lessons yeah. from Ted. Did you? Yep. He's uh he passed away at 58. Man. Wow. So many, so many people die so young now. It's, it's freaking yeah. me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, some of the other songs on that album. Uh, what, what address is 809 West 12th Street? What is that? Oh, that was the address of of uh, Dave's studio where we cut that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's it's, it's no longer a studio anymore. <laughs> it's, really? Yeah, it's not. I don't think That's it's a, there. A, a very uh, smooth jazz type of a song. I, I really really like that song. Oh, well, thanks, song. man. But you got some great tracks on that. I, I like Medicine Man. Thanks. Yeah, um, that, that, I like that too. And Trouble in Paradise. That that fits right here in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And the, the drummer on those tracks is uh-huh. Don, my good friend Don Harvey, who was in right. the Ian McLagan band, uh, the Bump yep. Band. Wow. Great album. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And, and I liked, the, which was very clever, the Oh No bass solo. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that was just a bass solo, pretty much, right? Yeah, it's just a little thing that kind of presented itself. And it's just a one-pass deal. It's not me overdubbing anything. That's just a, those chords are just how I do it. But it's amazing how, the, how you can make the bass sound like a guitar. You right. Know, almost like an acoustic guitar is what it sounded like. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I kind of, I do that occasionally. It's weird, uh, you know, I'll get these little mm-hmm. chord things in my head, and if if it's if it works with the rest of the instruments, it's fun to throw those kinds of things in from time to time. Who are some of your favorite bass players? Oh, well, Duck Dunn, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> for sure. And I would say on uh I think Jimmy Garrison, uh John mm-hmm. Coltrane's bass guy and right. Scott LaFaro who played with uh Bill Evans. Mm-hmm. I got schooled with by Ed Cassidy and John Locke. Um so those guys really I I actually tried to sound like them for a long time and not being very successful at it. Uh, sometimes I'd listen to some of the early spirit, spirit jazzy stuff and I I sound like like some kid tr- just trying to sound like a jazz guy. It took me a while to, I don't know, make the whole jazz vocabulary sound, you know, normal. You know, it, it took me a while to integrate all that wonderful theory, and um, it took a while. But yeah, that was that's all part of it. And it's interesting how it it pops up. I mean, what I like about the Firefall experience these days is that Jock really enjoys kind of stretching out. He likes to show off his guitar prowess and stuff. And and since I'm uh, I'm the guy that made up the bass parts, he gives me a lot of latitude. So when we launch into some of these extended jams like uh, Strange Way or whatever, you know, we can go anywhere as long as you know we bring it back to the back home eventually. You know what I mean? <laughs> eventually, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easy for you guys to go off, you know, in, 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 you know, just kind of improvise on, on yep. a, a lot of those songs, you know. And yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's got to be fun. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it really is, and, and as long as the audience isn't left in the dust, and there's, the, you can kind of keep the train of thought going. Well, this is really the song, and you kind of bring them back into that. Then the people seem to really enjoy the the journey, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I enjoy it. Todd, Todd Rundgren does that. On a lot does of he? Stuff, yeah. 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 You, you worked also with the guy, a French guy, right? Is it Chardot? Chardot? Yeah, J, uh, Jean-Jacques J.J. Chardot. Chardot, yeah. Ch- yeah, Chardot. He's wonderful. And, and my friend Hank, who was uh, the uh, musical director for Timothy, mm-hmm. who is now running for uh, Congress in, in Kentucky and doing well, oh. I must say. Really? Was uh, produced the last uh, two J.J. Uh, Chardot records, and mm-hmm. I was lucky enough to be on both of them. What a what an interesting guy! What a, and he was a child star in France. He was an really? actor. Yes. Huh. 
just a wonderful guy, just a character, man. You would, he just is such, so entertaining and so, um, just so energetic and positive, and he's just a wonderful guy. <clears throat> they say it's the, the last album is kind of a, a touch of Funky Zappa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not afraid to get out there, that's for sure. And John McPhee was on that too, right? Was he on the last album? I think he was. Yeah. I'd have to, I'd have to look at it to see. Huh. Here's a question, Mark, that I ask everybody. <clears throat> if you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, uh, to perform or collaborate, with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Oh, wow. Well. Hmm. I get some interesting answers from this. I'll bet. Yeah. Well, God, I'm just kind of, a, that's a interesting question. Well, you know, I would, well, I would like to reconnect with Randy, to be honest, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, try to, get something going um but as far as the just the, the big big names um i love playing with with dan too gosh he was such a prolific guy and just so fluent in, in his i mean his keyboard playing and he was a great blues guitarist and blues singer you wouldn't normally get that from his other style of singing but uh yeah he had a great voice he had a really oh, good I, voice yeah, but um, it would have been nice to jam with the original birds. I have to say, yeah, but get 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 Chris on mandolin and let me sneak in there. Yeah, <laughs> take Carol Kay's part and work I with it. That. I love the birds. Yeah, Ro- Roger lives over here in in Orlando. Oh, great! Yeah, he's a nice guy. I've interviewed him. Huh. Well, you, you got anything else for me? Well, dude, you you are very <laughs> thorough, I must say. And I, <clears throat> I don't really have much I can add to it at this point. But, but come to a show. It would be hilarious to have you and Doug and your families come to a show whenever. I guess Doug's in L- L.A. Is he in L.A.? Or how does that work? Uh, you're, you're in Florida. D- Doug's in – no, he's not in L.A. He's in – God, I, I, now I'm going to lose it because oh. he's near um, – north of, I think, San Francisco. Okay, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I forgot the name of the the, the town, and I should know this. But it came like, up on my phone, but you're right. Paradise yeah. or something. Paradise. California. That's it. Yeah. Paradise, California. Yeah. yeah he, he's a good guy. Him and um, his twin brother own the station, actually. Oh wow! Uh, BBS Radio, and and uh, they're getting bigger and bigger. You know, they're they're awesome. That is they, great. They are awesome. So, uh, Firefall is going to be starting their tour again. Uh, you, you work. You guys are working on some uh, new tracks, possibly a new album. Um, what what yeah, else the, is going the, on with the Firefall? Plan, the, the plan is to mm-hmm. maybe get uh, five songs completed. And then uh, put them out as uh, like uh, extended play EPs or, or 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 something like that. So just something we can, something new we can uh, talk to the audience about and sell at our shows. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will probably to put two or three of the, uh, five song CDs out. So we'll probably have you know three of those out. And then that'll mean we can we can go through the 15 songs and maybe c- compile. Uh, um, an album out of that, and that'll be the album. So it's just a way to kind of uh, put out bits and pieces so that people can kind of get it, and then we can kind of have more stuff to sell at shows, which is really what it's about. A- any chance? Any chance of Rick coming back? You know, I had Rick on the show. Um... Well, you know, yes, I, I would say there's a chance. He's, he joins us on stage, and, and we do uh, uh, songs together in Colorado. It's just, um, it's his health. He's just kind of, yeah. he he hurt himself, and yep. he's, you know, it's just not, he's not the, he's not capable of really putting up with all of the demands of travel and all that stuff. And so, uh, I don't know, I think, it would, it would, like with uh, Larry, I think that when, when we're mm-hmm. close and, you know, it's convenient, and, and then that, that'll happen, and um, that'll be it, you know. 
but I love Rick, and I, I would love to do some stuff with him. Maybe uh, he says he's coming up with some good song ideas, so maybe I'll help him with his mm-hmm. one of his upcoming projects. You know, just as a studio guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, well, oh, he's I enjoy a great talking guy. to him. Yeah. Mark, thank you so much, man, for being on the guest, being a guest on the show today. Uh, more importantly, for all the incredible music you've given us, oh, and, brother, and, and thank conti- you so much, Ray. Continue to bring us. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> Firefall is one of my favorite bands of all time. I always loved them, ever since the '70s. Uh, you know, I saw you guys a bunch of times. Uh, you know, and it's so cool that you're back with them. You know, all the you know the, the main guys are still there, which is yeah, really, really important. Yeah, you know, thank and, you so and much. I, I love I love, what, love the way you're incorporating spirit stuff. Maybe you can sneak in, run, run, run in there somewhere. <laughs> that might work. Jay, uh, uh, Jock plays badass slide, so that that yeah. might be fun. Yeah, that's a that's a great <laughs> song. It is a really good song. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Mark. Thank you so well, much, man. Ple- Keep in touch. A pleasure, and let's stay in touch and uh, yes. hook up when when we come through town. All right. Oh, oh for sure, definitely. Thanks, Ray. Take care, man. Bye-bye. You too, bro. Bye. For more information about Mark Andes, visit www.mark um, and Andes Music, markandesmusic.com. Also, www.firefallofficial.com for more information, concert news. Uh, you can purchase Mark Andes' most recent album entitled Real World Magic uh, at amazon.com. Very special thanks to Denise uh, Kovalevich, and I'm hope, hope, hopefully I'm saying that right. Denise is the CEO of DMK Publicity for arranging this interview. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I think I got the wrong one here. Yeah, no. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and of course the dynamic duo of uh, Doug and Don Newsom of VBS Radio for making it. it, it I think Denise was. Uh, the CEO of DMK, but I think she did uh, some someone else. I think I got Mark here uh, directly. Anyway, that happens from time to time. I want to thank the dynamic duo of Doug and Don Newsom of BBS Radio for making the magic happen for each and every broadcast of the Ray Shasho Show. If you have comments or suggestions for the show, contact me at the Ray Shasho Show at gmail dot com. Don't forget to purchase a copy of my book entitled Check the G's, A True Story of an American Eclectic American Family and a Wacky Family Business, or the second edition entitled Wacky Shenanigans on F Street, Proud to be Politically Incorrect in Washington, D.C., available now at Amazon.com, and I promise you will live it. Uh, I want to thank Trace Keene. That's the person I needed thank for this interview today. I got uh, my uh, wires crossed here. Thank you to Trace Keene for uh, arranging this interview today with Mark. Have a great week, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ray Shasho Show, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941 877 one five five two, or visit us at publicityworksagency.com, specializing in author and music artist publicity plans. We shine when we make you shine. Join Ray Shasho every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on PBS Radio Station One.